Hi everyone, this is Nabir Watcher. It is April 16, 2018. You all remember these sun halos we always see, you know, for just barely under two years now. See them every single day somewhere. Rare currents, ice crystals. But I, you know, I just think that's pretty laughable. I mean, look at how the sun is changing its diameter on the inside of this and notice how the outside diameter never changes I've made many a few videos about this I think I have a fairly reasonable easy explanation for this look at that Sun and notice how the when this thing when the Sun is as small as this whole thing it's darker well, let's just get right into it. Here I think we have I pretty much have a flashlight shining on the sun on the map. I've got the lens in front of it. A and then watch what happens as I move the lens towards the map or the earth. Notice how the shade of the lens is now becoming from a light gray as it pulls the light more towards the center on the focal point and the surrounding light around it gets darker towards almost completely focused and we can pull back out and we get a nice gray shadow so notice that what we see there and notice the likeness is <laughs> If we look at the difference between these two photos in comparison doesn't that look the same to you do we have a giant lens in front of us I absolutely believe it so let's look at the most more recent stunning evidence of this MB33 had covered this once thanks to autumn who supplied these pictures, videos of the lens array. Watch how I can catch this. It, notice she just moves the camera back and forth, bending the light all the way to the ground, warping this house. Look at that. Wow. Now, this is no ordinary lens. Before I show you any further evidence of this, you can, get a, you can go back and see all my other evidence. Now, some of you have already covered the lens array, but I believe that halo, dark halo we're seeing, is the lens. As the light is being bent from the sky to the center point, that's why it's dark. I am on jplnasa.gov website. Check this out. What is JPL and NASA building ultra thin lenses for? Why would they? This is rocket scientists. What are rocket scientists building lenses for? Researchers have developed an innovative flat optical lens as a part of collaboration between NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory and California Institute of Technology, both in Pasadena, California. These optical components are capable of manu manipulating light in ways that are difficult or impossible to achieve with conventional optical devices. The new lenses are not made of glass instead of silicon nanopillars are precisely arranged in a honeycomb pattern. Hmm. Yeah, like a hexagon. To create a meta surface that can control the paths and properties of passing light, applications of these devices include advanced microscopes. Here you go, displays like an LCD TV screen. Not just a lens, a display. Project Blue Beam. Are you guys tracking with me on this? To be mass produced, these flat lenses help make more compact, robust imaging assemblies. Seen under this, skipping down here, under scanning electron microscope, the new meta structures research created a re that resemble a cut forest where only stumps remain. Each silicon stump or pillar in its cross section 
and carefully varying di carefully varying the diameters of each pillar and rotating around their axis. The scientists were able to simultaneously manipulate and phase the polarization of passing light. Let's look at these little pillars real quick. So here are the pillars. You can see them shaping this light. Now imagine you could have it like a display. Notice how the light gets brighter at the focal point. They can create one big lens or a whole bunch of small ones, which would create the effect of a display. Each pillar, as it rotates, would get shorter and thicker, thus making it more dense. Each silicon pillar right here is being manipulated. As it gets denser, it bends light more. Let's read on. These <clears throat> Phase has to do with the separation between peaks of light waves. Light waves and phase with each other combine a single, more powerful wave. Wow. Manipulating light and its influence to degree, polarization refers to the way some light waves vibrate only through particular direction, whereas waves in natural sunlight vibrate in all directions. Manipulating the polarization of light is essential for operation of advanced microscopes, cameras, and displays. Wow. That's all. Uh, remember, researchers have developed. Okay, they did develop it. It has been made. What are they doing with it? Let's look at the more some more evidence of this. So we capture us all around the world, but one of my favorites is down south, where they look like they're the biggest. Check out the lens array here. I'm going to show you. This lens here, as you can see, as the sun lights up another lens here, caught on multiple cameras, we can even see this smaller lens, which I believe are far, farther behind them. They are overlapping lenses as well. These lenses are in like a parallel Rochester clo cloaking system. Let's observe this on yet another camera. So here is another camera. Many of you have already seen this many times, but for those that have never seen this before, this is where it is most obvious. Here we can see the overlapping lenses as the sun passes through these lenses. As the lens, as the fake sun simulator in its heliosynchronous orbit in perfect path with the, our real sun, here we can see the smaller overlapping further lenses focusing all their light onto the much larger ones. And we can see how the sunlight is refracting around forming these perfect circles. Now, what else do we have? We've got endless evidences of this with our double dark halos. I caught this one myself. How is it that we see this almost in every rainstorm? That's absolutely bizarre. What's up with the lens array here, people? Look at this thing closing in these videos. There we see the fake sun. And here we see the lens array, two lenses converging with one another as they work in concert with one another. I also seen on the FA cams, here we see it bending the light around the sun itself. Here we see a lens array lighting up here. Uh, the, the evidence just keeps piling higher and higher, people. Look what else the lenses can do. Some of you would miss this one. It could actually hide objects. That's why they're there. Pull the point of its focal point away and it makes it invisible. Go check out the Rochester cloaking device. So, and then in this video, you could see what happens when a moon passes through one of these overlapping lens arrays. We get this moon that actually splits into three equal parts. So if I get right on the spot, 
many of you have seen this before, The Disappearing Moon, you can watch it in my other videos. Let's see, I get this zoomed in for you. Okay, so here I had stopped it right at this spot here, so you can see this. Let me zoom that in for you. I'm sorry, I'm not able to zoom this in with this. <laughs> you can go back, I zoomed it in on my video. Next, I want to show you something um, more recently. Let's watch something pretty amazing. I call this the magic. So I am on the Australian webcams and I'm going to show you this moon here but before we do look at the time April 13 2018 what phase of the moon we at here so we go down to April 13th we come across and we should be at 10% illumination right that definitely not a full Sun right well let's just watch the rising Sun uh, rising moon excuse me so here we can see the moon at you know pretty much 10 percent looking relatively normal the moon begins to rise oh what do we see here we see one of the lenses illuminating over here but let's keep going then they throw down some heavy chemtrail it disappears behind the chemtrail why would they want to hide the moon at night or just convenient clouds whatever you want to call it but look what happens we still see the moon here. Let's watch, keep watching. Oh, look at this. Abracadabra, we have a full moon. Imagine that. Now, just keep watching, people. As it continues to rise in the sky, we get some more chemtrail clouds that blow in front of it. How convenient. And then right as it reaches the top it begins to become a 10 percent moon again wow now there is you think that's a little hoaxery or what now what do you think happened on the 14th let's see what a moon should have looked like kind of okay here we go so I will leave links for all these websites. Please go and do your own investigations. Check this out. Watch the rising moon. This is our 10% moon. This is just to show you the difference of what it should have pretty much looked like. They just have a really hard time making this moon simulator look real. Why would they do that? Or maybe the light of our sun is blocked. It would have been a new moon, so... And it pretty much vanishes. That's kind of what it should like. Why did it turn into a full moon yesterday? It was just one day ago. <laughs> Anyways, I got good news, everybody. Naughty Beaver is back. Please, I really miss you, Naughty Beaver. We miss your humor. I'll leave a link to his new channel. So, hope you liked all this video. Have a blessed day.